Hi there, it's Rebecca Mon, and I'm back one more time to show you one more Greg Tang puzzle. These, again, are puzzles we do in class, and you will be seeing this come home occasionally for homework. This one is Equato. Greg Tang's puzzles involve a lot of problem solving, a lot of important computation practice. Um, I've seen him speak um, to teachers, and he does say, you know, it's just not possible for students to get all the computation practice they need to be fluent at school. So by kind of sneaking in it to fun puzzles, they get a little more practice at home in school. So Equato tends to be the most difficult for parents and um, me as a teacher at first to understand, but once I get it and the kids we practice at school, they tend to catch on. So this is a first grade version. Second grade versions are a little bit more difficult. And this has the answers in it because I couldn't get a free first grade version without answers. I do pay to subscribe to the second grade version. Um, that's the one we use. So you're gonna fill in the empty boxes to make every horizontal and vertical equation correct. And equation is a good word to review, and we do it in school a lot and at home. It's the same as number sentence or number model, which are the terms our um, math program uses at school. Okay, um, and you read, it says read equations left to right and top to bottom. So, you know, we try not to let the kids do one minus something is four. Um, or we don't really read in that direction, so we read this, these directions. And they give you the answers here, and use, this is called the bank, and you use each number once. So the trickiest part in Equato, when we do it in the classroom, is trying to find a place to start. A place to start. So right here, so just kind of scan it. You might need to help the, your kids scan it. If you notice, this says, and originally without the answer there, it would have been blank equals three minus two. So this equation already had a three and a two. So we would only need to fill in one number, so that is a great place to start. And we remind kids the equal sign can be at the beginning like of the equation or near the end. It still means the same thing. So three plus three minus two must equal what and then one so then what's happened now is this equation going across now would only have one empty space so we have one equals five minus four so we want the kids to think five minus what number gets me to one so they can count backwards they can start at one and count up and should come with come up with four. Oh, and they should be counting uh, crossing those off as they use them because we're only using each number in the bank once so now this column would say if the answers weren't already filled in four equals what number minus one so we're trying to think of what number is one more than four or they can do four plus one to solve it and it would be five. Four equals five minus one. I am gonna go through this whole puzzle just because it can be confusing. So if you get the hang of it, you can shut me off now. All right. So now we have one variable left in this equation. Three plus something equals five. This is a little easier for kids. They're more comfortable when the equal sign is in that spot. So it's going to be a two. Now, there's only one digit left, but you want to make sure, um, like I do as a teacher, um, if you're helping with homework, that your child, you know, doesn't just fill it in randomly that, it may, that they think about it. So two equals what number minus one? So three minus one equals two, so that would make sense, and we can check our other equations. Five minus two is three. We can double check everything. So that one worked out great. The first grade one that I'm showing you here is a tad easier. So it might be a little more difficult. So the, I would say most of the time in class, I help kids find a starting point, an equation they should start with first. Um, I sometimes even put an arrow or, 
you know, circle it for that for them. So feel free to do that at home if they need help getting started. I think once they get started, it'll be all right. And just, you know, encourage and remind if you like to help with homework, flexibility. We practice this in school a lot that the equal sign can go anywhere. Okay. And, um, yeah, that's, I think that's about it. So this one's the most challenging of all the puzzles. That's why I wanted to devote it to its very own video. If you have questions, please let me know. This should be a review for them of subtraction and addition. The only thing that might be challenging is the actual format of the puzzles, but we always do them first in class, and we do them not daily, but we might do like Equato at least twice, twice a month in class. So they will get the hang of it. All right. Thank you.